Oh, yeah, call the Slugman's uh, meeting, meeting together for Tuesday, uh, May 30th, 6 p.m. We're, we're being filmed by uh, Franklin Community Access Television for the viewers' uh, enjoyment later on. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for Monday, May 15th, 2017. Uh -huh. I'll make a motion that we approve them. Uh -huh. as They've been reconstructed. Right. We we found a slight error when right. they were passed out earlier, Great. and uh, it's been corrected. And it's been corrected. So yeah. You can second that. And so I, I would second it. Yeah. I, All I in favor? I have a comment on that. Okay. Actually. Go ahead. Uh, what I have is um, I, that I owe Lisa actually some uh, information about meetings attended by select board members. So I'm not sure they are. Oh, and they were in here. Ready to approve. Um, not in the copy that I have here. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I will get you that information. Yeah, so we should actually okay. table this. Talk. Okay. You want to table the meeting for tonight, for now then? Table the minutes? Until they complete? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right, we'll table the min minutes. Um, Do we vote on that? Meeting minutes for next time. We didn't take a vote yet, official sure votes. Okay. We can just table it. Okay. Next item is the warrants. Uh, we have a vendor warrant for 541000 $997. We have a payroll warrant for $106,367. And we have a payroll deduction warrant for $28,460. I'll make a motion that we approve the vendor warrant first. For no, second it. Uh, any discussion? You might want to say yes. why it's so high. It's so high because there's a, a $436,000 fire truck is in there. <laughs> so, uh, that's a pretty hefty check. That increases that quite a ways. Uh, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, approved. Okay. The payroll warrant for one hundred six thousand three hundred sixty-seven dollars. I'll make a motion to approve it. Aye. Any, any discussion? No. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, then we have a payroll deduction warrant for twenty-eight thousand four hundred sixty dollars. Make a motion to approve it. Uh, so move. Any I'll second it. No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Those are all passed. All right. Next item is uh, minutes attended by. You guys can come in, sit down. And there's no more means. chairs out there if you want to bring them in. Bring them right in. Yeah. Bring in chairs from out there. Oh, my goodness. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, minutes attended by the Board of Selectmen. You I had none. Nope. All right. I had. Uh, Three of them. Uh, last Tuesday, I attended the uh, Franklin County uh, FRTA meeting, Regional Transit Authority meeting. We had our annual meeting, uh, and we discussed uh, at the meeting route changes to help improve the ridership. Oh, some, good, yeah. And a new, little bit of a rate increase. Uh, other than that, that was basically all we had at that meeting. So we can sit on this way. Okay. The other minute uh, uh, meeting I attended last week is I spent two days in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the new fire truck. Uh, How did it look? It looks absolutely fabulous. I think the town's going to be very much liking of this vehicle. Uh, we did a complete, spent two days going over the complete bid specs of it, and we actually sat at a table, a round table with the, with the company and their representatives for two days going over the little truck from the front bumper to the back to make sure everything was there we got ordered for it. So it looks very good. It's a good possibility. It might be started to drive it back to New England here at this at the end of this week. So. Is it red or yellow? It is red. Will it be here in two weeks? It should be here either next week or the beginning of the following week. So it'll be here before our 250th anniversary. Good. Hopefully. Fire on any unforeseen <laughs> complications. Right. Okay. And the last meeting I was at was just a few minutes ago. We had a two and I had a meeting with the 250th committee with the police and emergency services personnel to finalize everything that is going to be going on for the 250th weekend, starting with fireworks on Friday night and going all the way through to the culmination of the pretty good-sized parade we're going to have on Sunday afternoon. 
So we we finalized everything we need to do for emergency services. So. Do you have a weather forecast? Uh, we're hoping our friends going to be sunny. So that's all you can do. Okay, and you had none, so I guess that's all set on. Hey, do you have any citizens' concerns? Um, I would like to express a concern over the change in the law for the health care. Okay, we're going to bring you're on. You're on the okay. agenda. You're on the so agenda down for okay? Perfect. <laughs> Anybody else got any concerns? Uh, not positive? Okay. Well, Old business. I'll well, have one more thing. There's an almost dead, 80% uh, dead maple tree right between the corner of our property and the uh, Sheehan's Hay Field. And I've been picking up branches from that for uh, a year and a half now. Okay. And I'm wondering uh, who takes care of those sorts of issues. Uh, I, know I think the that's town on town property, isn't it? I think. Uh, yeah, right it's on the, the right of way. So we'll have to mention that to Ron Street. Okay. Okay, where is that exactly? It's right on the corner. I live at 100 Waitley Road, and it's right on the corner of my property. And as you go south along Waitley Road, you go into the uh, Sheehan's Hay Field. It's right there. Uh, you can't miss it. Is it the tree that had metal hanging up in it? No. I no, think Ron no. looked at that. We that's, had a watch over the tree. Yeah, I think yeah. you know what that is. Now this this is a almost dead mm -hmm. tree, and it's uh, yeah. dropping branches. And, I convinced it on. There's plenty of trees here. Okay, uh, old business. Sign revised access agreement for the Coles Lumber. That's the lumber company that would like to take some trees out up on the town farm, I presume. Right? Uh, they have to go through the town farm to get to their, to get land. To their land. It was already approved. Okay. But now we have the uh, the actual agreement. The agreement in here? Yeah, yeah that, that we worked on. It should be. Uh, maybe the second one down there. So are they going to come in and talk again? or? No, okay. no. They, um, I sent the information about it, and if there are no further questions, yeah, no, then, it's, then it's uh, ready to sign. You all had liked um, the one that was for Amherst, and this is based mm -hmm. on that. The only yeah. changes I, I sent to you uh, before the meeting. And I thank Lisa for uh, having created the document that did that. This is with Lincoln Fisher, the Bay State Forestry Service? No. It's not the one. It'll, it'll say notes no, on the Cal's agreement. It'll be this yeah. access agreement. There should be a Coles one. in there. If there isn't, uh, it would be great if you could approve it, and then we can have you come in and sign it. Uh, uh, I don't see it here. Oh, well, I have this copy. What is it? Oh, right all right. Just No, I don't have it. Um, well, there's this here. There's yeah. there's that copy. Okay. Well, we reviewed this. Uh, right. A couple weeks ago, right? Yes. You uh, want to discuss it? Oh. Uh, we already did. <laughs> so I, did. Uh, yeah. I think we're all Should good. To make a motion? Sure. I would I would move that we approve this and sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Tom will get us the official copy to sign. Oh, uh, uh, that, that that's good for now. I mean, we didn't get anything on official yeah. paper. No. Oh, right. Um, I will. Uh, I will do that. Should this be on official paper? Sure. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Oops. Into uh, five thirty. 2017. Which was signed to. Make it official. And they have to sign it. Okay, the next item on old business is the tornado recovery with Grant Ingalls and other people from Pumpkin Hollow, I presume. Is Grant here somewhere? I haven't seen him yet. Do you want to hold off on that? Sure. If he makes it or? Yeah. Okay, we'll postpone mm -hmm. that a few minutes. Okay, the next is uh, approval of an implementation for the process to change health benefits 
pursuant to Mass General Law 32B, section 21 and 23. And I think we have to wait until Jan comes in at 7. Uh, right? She's no, not we, coming, we, I don't we, we can go ahead with that. Okay, okay, John. You want to talk about it? Okay. Um, the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust has requested all of their member towns to take at least this step at this time, uh, which enables the select board then to make changes to the health care plan that we have through them. But they have uh, discovered is that over the last two years, they've lost $2 million a year, and they have brought down their reserves quite a bit. Uh, it's not a sustainable direction, so they're going to need to raise prices in some way. The group that is the advisory group for them is made up of the treasurers of all the towns. Mm -hmm. There are about 70 towns in the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust. Uh, Worcester County, the Valley, I think some from Berkshire County. And the current proposal, as has been developed within that advisory group, is to raise co-pays within the plan rather than raising the cost of the plan themselves. Uh, of course, the towns pay a certain percentage for um, the health care plans. Conway pays 70 percent with employees paying 30 percent. Um, so their uh, current proposal is not to um, with any luck, continue raising the, the rates on the plans themselves by as much, uh, but try to get a little bit more money um, paid through co-pays. Mm -hmm. We can't charge more than the state group insurance commission charges for co-pays. Uh, so there's a, there is an upper limit on that, uh, but they thought that it would be good, uh, even though we have one of the best, if not the best, health insurance plans in Massachusetts. Um, they thought we should uh, start to start to pay, uh, start to ask people to pay a little bit more for co-pays and see what that does. That's the current suggestion. Now they'll be talking at their next quarterly meeting, at probably at the next couple of quarterly meetings, about. Uh, exactly what proposal they want to bring to the towns for their consideration. Okay. Um, this vote prepares you to act on those proposals uh, that they will bring to you, okay. which they don't have yet. Don't have so this is their attempt to address an ongoing deficit. Um, the proposal that's been made so far is to raise co-pays, uh, okay. but that, um, and there are different ideas within that of how that could go. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, there are no, uh, nothing is set in stone at this point, but they do want to prepare the way for uh, the, the towns in the Group Insurance Trust taking some action before, <coughs> um, before they bring us okay. something to act on. And this would prepare us to take that vote. Okay. So we, we have to vote on this to have the authority to ultimately approve what what they're going to recommend. Uh, yeah, really even to deliberate what they're going to recommend. You, you would approve it or disapprove it or, yeah. or whatever. Yes. Okay, uh, Ms. Siegel from the... Um, uh, I represent the, the teachers union of the four towns. Um, my my question is, it, it feels like you're putting the cart before the horse, that you're voting on something to change a law that you have no idea what the final proposal from the Hampshire Group Trust is going to be. And it feels like to us that if you make this kind of a change, that a lot of the, I, I guess you'd call us stakeholders, you know, we're, we're involved in the process mm -hmm. and we don't want to feel like we're being excluded from the process. Right. Um, that's what it feels like from my point of view and from the teacher's point of view. Um, it feels as though health costs are out of control. We've already had a 10% increase in our premiums. We can't keep pace with our salary increases with the increases in premiums that, you know, so now you're going to add co-pays on top of that. 
how are we going to make it up in our salaries when they've been held pretty low for a long time? Um, if if you're going to raise copays on us, there has to be a little bit of give and take here for the teachers, and but, as but well as the town employees. The, it, 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 I know it's not a vote to, to to take any. It's to take future action. Yes. And it feels like if you take future action, that we're going to be excluded from the process, and we're here to to be part of the process. The quarterly meeting is not happening till July. Can you not wait until what happens in July to hear what the proposals might be? It just feels like it's a sped up process and it feels like it's not a transparent process from our point of view, that if you vote to make a change and the summer comes, nobody's around and you can say, oh, we're going to adopt this new process. It just doesn't feel clean and right. I know East Hampton decided not to do it right now because they didn't have enough information um, at the table. And I'm just saying, slow it down and listen for some information well, forthcoming. That was my concern last week, that we didn't have enough information. You, you don't we have, have yeah. Apparently. It, this is just a guess that they want to raise co-pays. But, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter what they're going to do. I mean, in other words, that's all going to be decided sometime in the future. And, yeah. and the treasurer has come to us and asked us to give or grant ourselves the the authority to have a say on this in the future and i'm saying slow down and wait until you hear more of the information i'm not saying that you can't have the but vote we can't even future. vote no unless we do this well tom and i met uh, yeah. for a few minutes with jan this morning and one of jan's comments been to us was there's only been two or three towns that have voted to move forward with this and the rest of them had it for some unknown reason she had, didn't have all the information and and uh, I, yeah. I kind of agree with Mrs. 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 Siegel because you know granted we're not we're not voting for an increase at this point but we're opening the door up for the increase without a lot of information well it feels like you're even opening the door up to change a plan if you don't like what the Hampshire Trust well, offers. I, I, I be, to be honest with you, I think what's going to happen here, and it's just me speaking myself, I mean, listen to everything that I've heard on this situation, the towns are going to have to make a change eventually because of the cost of escalating. Yeah. And, and they have a trust fund set up with money in it, and they have They're been going, money. they lost a million last yeah. year, they're going to lose two or three million this year out of the trust fund, and they're afraid this trust fund goes broke, and this trust fund goes broke. We're out of luck. We're out of luck with yeah. the total insurance policy, and we've got to drop back to the state policy, which right. isn't as good as the one that we have now. So two questions. What What is the limit on state co-pays? Does anybody know what that upper limit is? Jan was going to get a bunch of information for us. Because we said. don't even have that. So, you know, that doesn't even give us an indication of how high the co-pays are going to be. Um, well, no proposal has been made yet. That's, no, but if, but if the there process. is the that, state that is cap on it, of, then we might have an idea of how much it's going to cost us out of pocket. Only when a proposal is made, and we don't even know the co-pays are going to end up being the proposal. That's what has been on the table mm -hmm. in, the advisory, in the advisory group yeah. so far. That's why we're starting the process now to give people the opportunity and to let everybody know there's going to be a public meeting in July, you know, at which this is going to be discussed. All and I'm saying is to, to make a more informed decision before you decide to take, it's not saying don't vote, it's just wait and make a more informed decision down the road. Well, the the decision for tonight is whether to, to grant change, themselves but, the authority but, but to I make something in the that. future. And and right. I think that, th that they have, you know, as much information as they're going to get about that process. I think, yeah, there's no other information yeah. coming forth, forthcoming at the present time. All the information that will be forthcoming will be about the actual proposal, right. which is not up for, um, which is not the subject of the current uh, vote or so lack we thereof. <laughs> If we don't vote this proposal tonight, the change, and I shouldn't call it proposal, uh, the change in the state, the state wants us to vote on, 
That doesn't allow anything up for future discussion, correct? Doesn't open the doors for future discussions? Well, the future discussion will be on giving yourselves the authority to go ahead. This, this vote will come up again at some point. You can still vote later on. Am I, am I understanding that? That mm -hmm. if you don't vote it tonight, like at the next mm -hmm. monthly meeting, you can still vote it. Is okay, that well, well, bi weekly. Would I, so would I set you at ease if I were to assure you that if we had passed this, uh, this the way it's worded tonight, that when the first discussion comes up about any of the increase or anything, that we notify you in advance that you have a chance to be at our meetings? Uh, in fact, they were notified it by gave certified us a, it mail. Gave us a week, less um, than a week. And, and uh, of this vote, okay. which is what is required. So that can um, we make a stipulation that we do that again for them, folks? Oh, uh, you don't have to. We, we are required by law to oh, do yeah. that. Okay. Yes. So, so us voting this time, then, I guess, is not going to make any changes in anything right at the moment. Because we no, just don't except know. your status as being able to able make to a decision that. in the future. To, to me, it's unfortunate that, that this proposal has been floated. You, you know, that, that, that Without this, more this information, it just, it's a, that, it just that, doesn't seem that it's a very informed proposal because it's not attached to, any, well, to anything. Well, and I mean, it should be good in that now you have some idea of the, what they're thinking about and you can come to the meeting prepared to argue for it or argue against it or why you like it, but, but something's going to have to happen. Right? At, at I mean, some point, something is probably going to have to happen. So, we don't know what yet. Uh, so you, yet you, it still seems that you're putting the cart before the horse. and. and uh, well, this particular cart has to go before the actual horse. Yes, of but it the, doesn't have to policy. go before we find out what the proposal actually is, which comes up in July. I would think that by July they will have something more concrete to go on, because that's when the advisory committees meet. I think Jan sent me that date for my count. It's like July 10th or something like that. And it just would seem like you might want to wait until July 10th to hear what the Hampshire County Trust Advisory Committee puts together before. And all we would do then is vote ourselves the authority And then, then. you vote it again, so but still it's an informed decision. I don't decision. see why we don't vote it now to say we want, we would like the authority to take action on this when we need to. I, I, you know. It seems a little superfluous, but... Well, it, it, I don't, I think Bob will agree with me. It's certainly not our intention to cut you folks out of the picture Absolutely at all. Absolutely not, right, uh, right. Because I'm a town employee also, a retired uh -huh. town employee. <laughs> right. So this thing affects me just it as much does. as it does you. It does. Yeah. Actually it more. Just sounded, it does more because I have to pay 50% instead of 30%. I'm going there too, Bob. You're getting there close. I'm coming. I'm coming. So, uh, well, I don't, you know. Would you like to make a recommendation? I think we should vote this. You know, I don't see that it forces any decision in the future. It just is our... You know, to some extent, it's our saying, yes, we believe that we are going to need to take action on, uh, I mean, that we, that we would like Conway to remain in this, this insurance program. I mean, you know, our, the, our choice will be that Conway isn't part of this insurance program mm -hmm. if we don't like the way it, it ends up. And, and, and I hope that's not where we are. Yeah, I hope not. Because we have a real good program. It's a good program. It's a good program. It's a good program. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like to make a motion? So I, I move that we sign this. I'll no second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll sign it. Does that, you have the form here somewhere, Tom? There you go. And we will keep you well informed, Thank believe you me. We're not, our intention is not to cut you out at all. Um, it's, it's, it's to part approve of the process, it. It's not to so. sign it. We just approve it. We approve it. We, so we don't have to sign it. You don't we have just, a letter? We're voting that we approve no, it. No, it's just, it's just okay. an approval. Okay. So you have that. Okay. Right. Thank you. So thanks. Okay. So, thank so. you. Um, strictly, actually, strictly speaking, since you've already moved, could you, could you motion re revoke that? That that's what you're supposed to have. So you so. want to say it officially? Go ahead. Make it official. Sure. I move that the town of Conway elects to engage in the process to change health insurance benefits. Under MGL Chapter 32B, Sections 21 through 23. Second. So that's the motion. I'll second okay. motion. I'd favor. say aye. Aye. 
Motion carries. See that the right way now? That's the right way. Okay, is Grant Ingalls around? Is Grant in here? Are you, most of you people from the Pumpkin Hollow group? Is that what this is? All you people here for? No, we're here for the land trust. Oh, for the land trust. Okay. <laughs> Grant is here. I think. I <laughs> Grant, do you want to go first, or do you like all these land trust people to go through first? Why don't they go first? Okay. All right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, I hear you. Can I just ask anybody who's just coming in now to please sign your slips for the meeting record and make sure you pass it around to the Okay. I'm happy not to be in the camera. Okay, just for now, because we have so many people in the room and I don't want to hold anybody up any longer tonight, we're going to jump from old business to new business and uh, we're going to have the conservation restriction for the Sheehan property discussion at this point in time. So, uh, who wants to start? You want to start, Tom? Uh, well, I just introduce Elaine Peteroy from the Franklin okay. Land Trust and let her take it away. Sure. So, how are you guys? Good, it's you? been a while. My name's Robert Baker. Elaine Peteroy. Bob I think we met the last time. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Just the two of you today? That's it. No job. That's it. Okay. So and you have maps? So or that's, like that's the map. Maps. So, um, I am here with the Sheehan's who are out in the hallway. Maybe they can come in if we need if That would be great. Um, as the owners. Um, so, my name is Elaine Peteroy from the Franklin Land Trust, and I am here to um, hopefully wrap up a conservation restriction on 54 acres that Bill and Katie own in on Pumpkin Hollow that I think everybody's aware of. There's you you can look at that. I have I printed one out. So, they came to us um, last, actually last summer, if not a little bit earlier. Um, they are selling the land and they want to put a conservation restriction on it first, limiting it to one house lot. So we have worked with, um, they already have a buyer for it and the buyers are here as well. Um, they've had the um, area where the house can be built. So just to step back a moment, the conservation restriction generally, we define um, where the house can be built by either just having someone exclude an area, survey it out and say this is your lot that meets Conway zoning, or we say you can put put it within the conservation restriction, and we can call that an envelope. So the house stays with the land. Mm -hmm. um, so they've surveyed out a 2.7 acre um, area. In is that the, what this in yellow is? Yep, that's what the yellow that's is. 2.7 acres. Yep, it stays with the con stays with the rest of the land, but that within that they can just treat that as the um, their building buildable area. Buildable area. They have also surveyed out the. Um, mm -hmm. The driveway, which which um, essentially matches the existing road that was put in there when there was some plans for subdivision mm -hmm. in the past, and then gets up to the top of the uh, property. It's already been perked, um, and so this is the last step. And we've been through conservation restrictions with you guys before, mm -hmm. so it's been reviewed by um, Department of uh, Conservation Services, our attorney, their attorneys. Um, I have the final documents here. It essentially allows everything that they would want to do. Um, agriculture, forestry, they can build trails, they can post it or not post it. It's their own land that stays on the tax rolls. This restriction will stay with the land if they ever sell it or pass it down. So this restriction is basically prevents them from building on any mm -hmm. other area other than that. Right. Yep. And I, area. Exactly. And so I think given the um, the natural heritage, the great um, natural communities out there, that it's a great balance. It allows for a very nice house lot, so you can put your barns and your house and your pool and your tennis courts and whatever else people would like to put. Um, I guess no one's putting a tennis court. I guess not. Or, or maybe it's, oh, maybe it's a pool. <laughs> I do a pool. Um, and so while protecting the rest of it. And They're almost right next door to our Conway pool. So. Yes, they are. They are. So they, they shouldn't be. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. once this is done, this will be this will be put in place, you know, as as is and forever if it gets signed by the Secretary of Environmental Affairs and by the Select Board. So we are here to ask for your vote to support it and to um, sign the conservation restriction so we can move towards recording it. I'm going to play the devil's advocate for a you second. You sure can. Uh, what does this conservation restriction do to the tax rate? So in the, um, 
basically you will treat the house lot as if it was a house lot. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it meets the, the Conway zoning in terms of size. Um, the frontage is what the, the frontage is that's on the restriction. Um, the land now currently, I think the taxes are at about $1,200 a year. I fully anticipate by the time the new, the buyers um, build their lovely home and make all the improvements that you'll be getting a lot more taxes. Um, and then the land that goes into the conservation restriction, unless they put it in chapter, which it's not in chapter now, it's really up to the town. It's not a, um, there's no state statute that says conservation restriction land has to be put in a certain rate. So all towns do it a little differently. Some people, some towns just put it into chapter 61 forestry rate, some put it into 61B, some put it into back lot. So it really is left to the towns. There's no state rule on that. Um, so you can see what you've done in past. Um, and some, town, some people just put their land right in, into chapter, like 61B, because maybe they're not going to cut much, but they're going to keep it open, and then that, that, is dictate, that dictates the tax rate. So, um, so it is left up to the assessors. There's no Department of Revenue rules. You know who would decide that? The well, first, the, the landowners would have to decide whether or not they're putting it into chapter. Right, right. And right. Then, then it's the formula is fairly straightforward. Right. And yeah. obviously, yeah. chapter has its own restrictions. If they're not going to do forestry, then they really shouldn't be putting it under chapter. They're not agriculture, right. so maybe it's are 61. Are there new owners here somewhere? Yes. They're Go almost on. new owners. Hi. Are almost Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not quite owners yet. Not right. quite owners yet. <laughs> no, not till this is <laughs> Maybe until I'll trip with a pen, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. well, while nice you meeting. might, you know, I think $1,200 a year in taxes is fairly, um, you know, that's that's not a high amount. I think mm -hmm. once you improve a house lot, you're, you're probably going to be going five or $6,000 for a build for a building and all the... Do you have something there, Roland, you'd like to show us? This is our house mm -hmm. to be... You want to see what the house is going to play? Uh, sure. <laughs> A modest looks like a house. Looks like a house story. Nice. You can probably say more. No, we don't need copies of this, but <laughs> <laughs> But we're planning to put it up very on very nice the colonial upper part. Like, is it colonial? It is colonial. Colonial and we're planning on building it on the northern part. So so we on the on the map that we got we, Yeah. That we, so we're going to put it up above. Not here. Uh -huh. No. Uh -huh. We're going yeah. to put it more up in here. Yeah. Um, so it should be up in here, Mark? Yeah. So Touch it'll that. be more enclosed and mm -hmm. secluded. Um, the front of the house will actually be facing north, slightly northwest, the back of the house to mm -hmm. take in the views of the ponds will face yeah. south, southeast. Um, this is the back. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, this will be two stories. This will be a one story, and then a one story um, sunroom, mm -hmm. some porch attached to the living room, and then entry hall. Basically, the second floor will mirror the first floor with a you know three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Just a little over 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks like a nice taxable house. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. That's just scare them away. Just just so you have room for the swimming pool and the tennis court. Oh, well, we have to balance. Uh, okay. I think this is a good balance. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. I guess so. my next question is: that a lot of people are represented here. Did you any other people like to discuss anything about any of this? I mean, are you all? Good with this? Neighborhood support for this. Neighborhood support. This is what it is. Okay. Well, that's very good. Okay. This is the neighborhood support for this. They have enjoyed this open space for a long time, and they wanted to stay that way. And to me, it feels like no one's even, you know, you'd have to look hard to see this house. It's set way back from the road. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. Yeah. We like the neighbors. Sure. you have any other discussion you want to discuss? I, I don't see any downside. Right. This is wonderful. Uh, I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen <laughs> approve a conservation restriction for the Sheen property, as, as described here on the table. I'll second it. Any discussion about it? No? Okay. All in favor? I'd vote aye. Aye. 
Excellent. You You're done. Thank Thank you. You. I can leave. Oh, great. <laughs> Welcome to Conway. <laughs> So, so I think we got a copy of that. No, well, that's, no, that's the official one. We got. That's oh, the oh, we have to you sign can this. sign later. I can pick it up tomorrow morning. No, 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 right now. Do I, does John want to sign this? Is a notary? Uh, I'm a notary. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. I didn't know if you were a notary. <laughs> no, uh, no. I didn't want to hold up the rest of anything else. It's strictly notary public there, right? So there's one of those sticky... As long as you recognize uh, Robert and Bob here. So, well... Right. Do I have to have my birth certificate to show you? I don't know you. <laughs> so if you want to just fill in. He's impersonating a Bob Armstrong. Well, there you go. <laughs> You're new from the last time I was here. I am new. This is my first one. Seriously? Absolutely. Well, first conservation restriction, that is. Yeah, not first yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you all for being very concerned about this. And I think that's great. Of course, I don't have a pen either. We protect this from badly needed land. And, uh, yeah, I have a pen. Okay. The nice thing about it is it doesn't look like I it's going to affect pen. the tax rate. Maybe it actually improves right. the tax rate a little bit. So. I'm guessing it will improve. Yeah. Now, there's only one place for the selectman to sign on this, right? Yes, there should be one of those pages. Yeah. Yep, that's it. But you fill dates in and stuff like that, how's that? Yes. And the rest is all notary public, I think. Yes. And then if you if you would sign the box under under. Yep. What else do you need to know here? Notary services performed. Mm -hmm. um, I can fill that all in. If you just sign that and then put your address. I got that. Yep. That's the important stuff. You want me to do the bottom, huh? Somewhere down there. Paraphernalia. <laughs> you can <came> quit. <laughs> There used to be a lot of notaries around, and then they started disappearing. It's true. And then they charge, which they're not supposed to, apparently. Um, so. Is it a good way with that? I don't know. If I could just steal a pen, that we can fill the rest in right here. That's good. So unorganized. Okay. Thank you. Have a license, Bob? No, never mind. I do. Do you want to fill that out? I hate to be a picky. Uh, no, no, no. Then I can. I have to do that. I have to get it out. Though. Your notary? Yeah. No, no. She doesn't know my driver's license. Oh, I assume that's what she wanted. She already got my information. I do. She already got my number. I got your number. She has my pen. Where does she want my? I think there's a spot that says identification. ID type. ID type, and then put your put the number. ID checked. Okay, okay. So type is just driver's license. Yep. Making you do all the work. Hey. Issued by the state of Massachusetts. What's that? Commonwealth. Oh yeah. Like what? Three other states. Trivia question to take up time. Pennsylvania. Three other commonwealths. Pennsylvania. Oh. Actually, four if you include something that's not a state. Virginia. Virginia. That's true. Virginia. 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 Kentucky. Pennsylvania. Kentucky. 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 Really? And the one that's not a state? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. And this is all without Google. Well done. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And now you have to check it right here. Well, that I trust. No, don't trust. Okay, I won't. Good picture. Trust but verify. There you go. 
Okay. Thank you all. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you have a lot more going on? Or yes, we do. Out? No, 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 we got a lot more going on. We may be back again to chat about some other projects, but we'll, we'll, we'll let this go easy. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. More of a county government. So welcome to Conway. Are you just moving here, or are you already here? Welcome to Conway. <laughs> I don't know. The Hilltown's very okay, different. Okay. The next item on the agenda, we're going to jump back into old business one last time, and we're going to discuss the tornado recovery with Grant Ingalls and others. And Catherine Rydell. And Rydell. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So we want to thank you for uh, opening up the town hall, uh, the GP room, for the place where uh, the folks from Team Rubicon had their meals. That was, that was very extremely helpful. For your information, they did all the logistics on meals working with the Salvation Army and the Red Cross. They stayed in the Waitley Congregational Church. They took showers, uh, which was a sore point, in, at the Greenfield Y. But, uh, but they, they manage all their own logistics. They're pretty impressive. So we got in contact with them through uh, MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. They didn't like the why? They didn't like the distance. Yeah. Oh, it was after okay. a long day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. 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 So I um, want to thank you for that. Uh, the residents they helped, which were five property owners, basically, including the church. And I just want to say a little bit more about that. What do we have, about five minutes, 10 minutes here? Go ahead. Not We're too not, much. We're not, not too much. much. Okay. We're not eliminating you. So um, we are getting together and sending them a thank you letter. And I, Yes. And I had offered to help draft one for the town. And I think Tom, Tom's got a copy yeah, of it. Oh, good. And uh, you know, that was a quick draft, so read it carefully. Uh, but the, uh, they are in the process of becoming the preferred responder for MEMA. MEMA is Massachusetts mm -hmm. FEMA. And uh, because they offer unique services and can operate in an arena where no um, emergency designation has been made, declaration has been made. When there is an emergency declaration, like in the Springfield to Munson and beyond, mm -hmm. Brimfield tornado, their hours actually get contributed to the town, donated to the town, and FEMA reimburses for those hours. So, so our thought was, these are good people to know. Um, and uh, they would like to return to Conway. They're, they have their own internal bureaucracy. They, they're, they're mapped out like FEMA. Region 1 is New England. Um, the letter is to their uh, the regional administrator. It's an email because I, she, she's virtual. She doesn't have it, a physical office uh, because they're on the move all the time. And uh, so uh, we'd like to get them back if, they, if, they're, if, if their higher-ups think it's a good idea. They had a great experience in Conway. Um, uh, was, I went to their last meeting uh, and it was, it was quite moving. And they did an amazing, they moved mountains of material which is no longer visible or mostly not mm -hmm. visible. Um, I have to tell you that most of the material across from the church, in fact, probably two-thirds of all the material that they worked on was from church trees. And this is a unique situation. I know that you have an interest in the church as a, in a decision-making basis, but the, the only thing we were able to get from the church is one, um, one member of the church put up 400 I think it may be $500 now, for the chipper. We, last Saturday, um, I think there were five or six households got together for the chipper. It's 200 bucks an hour. We, don't, we haven't seen the invoice yet. Uh, they carried out about six or seven, maybe even eight uh, truckloads of chips. Uh, so um, that worked well, but what we're doing is we're really subsidizing the church at this point. And it's, uh, it's a little awkward. They didn't apply for the GoFundMe. Uh, Fireman's mm. Auxiliary, they made a decision not to do that so as not to compete with residents for whatever reason. And, but that meant that they have, can only rely on individual member donations. And, and their, their share of the chipping is probably up around $600 and they're only contributing at four or five so far. So we're trying to close that gap. So um, we think a thank you letter would be great to send 
Team Rubicon. They're, they're really uh, great people, and I think it's worth cultivating a relationship with them because who knows when you might need them again. And you, you had a good experience with them, too. Very much so. Yeah. Can I ask how you found out about this group? Right? <laughs> um, uh, through MEMA. Mm -hmm. MEMA, you know, MEMA is uh, sort of uh, the state bureaucracy that feeds FEMA money through. And they could offer no financial, we were looking for equipment or, the, you know, money to, buy, to rent equipment or anything like that. It just, without a declared disaster, nothing can happen that way. So they told us about uh, MEMA. They told us, they told, they, excuse me, MEMA told us about uh, Team Rubicon and I, and they, and uh, the regional coordinator, uh, Paul Kelly, got in touch with us and we worked from there. And they were, he was great. It was great. The guys who were here, are they local Western Mass people? Or All over New England and even, New York, and even New, York. New York City. Yeah, wow. yeah, they traveled far, a lot of them. They are all uh, certified in whatever they're doing, whether they're dropping trees or just cutting them up or operating heavy equipment. They have uh, liability insurance, uh, and they, were able to, they uh, are able to get heavy equipment from Case um, for free. And mm -hmm. so there was a, you know, a skid steer loader with a grapple uh, uh, that they got for free to move a lot of material around. When they were interviewed by the recorder and they said, you know, we're gonna make we're gonna make it so you can walk out of your house and hardly know that the tornado passed through, you know, uh, I my opinion was right. You know? And they really made a difference. Yeah. They did that. And like I said, they want to come back, so we want to encourage them because, and the letter sends yeah. a signal that they were appreciated to their higher ups who are wondering, hmm, maybe we should work in another area. Why should we go back to the same town the second time? So forth and so on. So, um, do they do other work around up on Academy Hill? Or? <coughs> they looked at some work there, but it, it's a complicated property situation uh, where the only Beneath the two duplexes, there there are there are probably a hundred trees down, yeah. big trees. But getting them that land is extremely wet. You could unless you you're going to tow stuff up the hill to bring material <coughs> uh, equipment down. You're actually going to go into the Sheehan property, and that's complicated because it's 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 grazing land and also it's where they raise hay and it's already fertilized and right. so that help, helps answer that. So so. Um, we, we know time is short tonight, but we wanted to begin a conversation about sort of how sort of a resident-driven group can, can um, communicate with the town and uh, also uh, collaborate with the town. And um, the communication that got us, you know, George Murphy was the person who sort of, I think, uh, you know, tried to get the town uh, hall open for them, and it worked pretty well. We had trouble trying to get the street closed. It just, the communications weren't good. I tried to, I called up, I talked to Tom's assistant. She said, well, call the highway department. I got, left a message, I said, get back to me, let me know if this is okay, or so no one did, no cones went up. But Team Rubicon had a number of cones who were able to sl slow the traffic down. But it was sort of a dangerous situation for a while. And I, I, we just don't know who to, you know, how, do we, should we call Tom up next time on something like that? or? Kenny well, or normally a road closure is uh, a temporary road closure like that would be would be easy, uh, in collaboration with the police chief and the highway superintendent I would think most of that okay yeah I, I yeah okay I'll, we'll try that we will have some, we are you have to start with the police chief first okay and then Good. Hot, discuss it with the highway. got it all yes. right uh, that's good because we, we may have, we're trying to get this one contractor from Ashfield who runs, uh, Rich uh, Pantermeal, who runs, I think, one of the largest tree clearing operations in western New England, uh, back with his machine for a few days. And so he will be in the street and at times. Uh, so a lot, a lot of us got GoFundMe money to pay for him to remove oh, yeah, the dangerous, because I still have, we still have trees falling. Uh, and the other question is, uh, they're hang the trees are hanging as the wind blows they fall further down the weight is greater more branches broke off I replaced the Subaru that got totaled and two days later branch comes down bounces puts that in the shop for another two thousand dollars 
So um, the other thing, the, the one thing that uh, lack, an area of, of ambiguity for us is what we have across the, the church and in a couple other areas are some stumps and tree sections that were too big to chip. They're over 27 inches. Is there any, any I see the town hauling st stuff from you know roadside debris. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way that the town could pick that up or that we could drag it to some stump dump? Well, what the town, at least when I was highway shooting, and I think probably Ron's the same thing nowadays, is when we have stump removal, we literally have to pay a contractor we can load it onto a flatbed truck, mm -hmm. and the contractor ends up taking it to Amherst, down to Wagner Wood Corporation, and they charge you to take the stumps in, yep. and they grind them up in the woodshed. They grind it, yeah. Monster grinder. What about tree sections? I mean, uh, we have a lot of a lot of big ash and pine sections, which were bigger than 27 inches in diameter, so we couldn't chip them. They tried. Mm. <laughs> You know, I think, and, and many of those are from the church. Talk to a, uh, a logger about that. I don't know if there's any. Well, probably I'm not asking, much value. Asking, can we collaborate with the town in this regard, in, in, in any way? Is, I, I guess my question here is. My question would be: Are they, are they town trees, or were they town trees? Some were. Some were. Most of them are church. The church's trees, uh, frankly, and there are more coming. Now, when I get. My contractor in there. He, my estimate is to mm -hmm. is to remove these trees and take them away. Uh, I, I, you know, I. But we have, you know, it's primarily church trees, mm -hmm. and so we're looking as landowners, as property owners, we're looking, saying, hey, why, what, why are we subsidizing this? Should we be subsidizing this? The only thing I would say, and uh, Bob can express his opinion on it, but my opinion on this is, you know. Much of the town would probably love to help you out doing that. We have to look at the whole picture, which is the whole tornado damage in the whole town of Conway, mm -hmm. from North Polar Road. Grand, you guys got devastated a lot here, but there's like uh, Alice's, yeah. his whole field. There's people out in the church that had a lot of tree damage, a lot of tree damage down in Matthews Road. If we were to offer you assistance in tree work, we'd have to offer it to everybody. All right. Oh, I get the slippery slope argument. You know, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not feeling comfortable saying that, but that's what we have to do. Right. We can't seclude just you people in pumpkin houses. We're going to give you this extra assistance, I, I, I and these other people can go, you know, go do what they're going to do. Well, you probably get trees down at your property. I'm sixty-five hundred dollars worth of work. So, I uh, do. so there's, you know, <laughs> yeah. if we open the door, we have to open the door to everybody. Well, my point is you we didn't pass any money at the town meeting, right. you know. Well, to, my to point fund is you may already like have a foot in the door with the church, given your your decision making role there. Well, it's it's a. I mean, I realize it's a very complex relationship, but it, you know, it, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, <laughs> we lent them some money, and now we're looking at um, how to how to get it back. Got it. <laughs> we well, it's not we lent it. We we granted them some money, and and under certain circumstances, it comes back to the town. Right. That that's the extent of our involvement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the, you, that's you, the well, church should have a little. I mean, we approved the initial payment from the insurance company. Right. No, yeah. that was put into a. Uh, d didn't we allow them to cash that check? No, oh, it's in the trust or something. In the trust with both names on it. Am I in the, right? In that, huh? Oh, well, in the bank account, yes. So we would have to co-sign for anything they're they're getting out of that. And I think that now it's uh, our council is talking with their mm -hmm. council. Yeah. yeah, I mean they they have an, they have access to some extent in a little bit of money. Right. right, that right. They, I mean, and they but need they, that to pay for work like what they've done on oh, the roof, and right. they have a Tree, lot of work they've Tree's done. Trees are the lowest priority. But, yeah. Um, so, all right. Well, so, I mean, then the other, only other option for us is is to try, perhaps with the church, to do, do another fun, round of fundraising. Because this is, we can't, residents, property owners can't pay for this sort of stuff. We've already... We've already subsidized the tree removal mm -hmm. uh, to a large extent, and feel like we can't do any more of that. We, you know, 
So I think that's the only, only avenue. Could we you have. Just leave their logs on the land across the road from the church? Most I mean, they'll have to deal with it eventually. Uh, right. I guess my question there would be if they had an insurance policy, which they did, on the church, I would think that it would be up to the group to investigate with their own insurance company and see if they can get... Now, if it's on your own property and your trees come down and block your access, I think they'll pay... They probably should pay for some of that on I your own. My understanding, I could be wrong, but having spent a lot of hours discussing this with my insurance company, Trees on the house, trees on the structure get removed, and they usually pay for that. Mm -hmm. Other trees, are, no. unless you have special provisions in your insurance, are never covered. So that would be that's what it would be. That's what it would be. So that's basically all that's wrong. Yeah, so we're all, so, right, so, well, I would encourage, you know, we're not going to resolve this completely tonight, so, but I would encourage you to think creatively about what we might do uh, in, in this situation. Is there some... But, but the town doesn't have a chipper that you yeah. Know, well, we, no, you, we, it's not true. We, we rent them. We rent them. Yeah, that's right. We right. rent them. So, but yes. you couldn't get one big enough, uh, uh -huh. I don't think. So, uh, but we ought to be thinking. You know, if you have suggestions about what we might do, other than paying out of pocket, we're all ears. Well, and, and I assume everyone's applied to the uh, private tornado relief fund. That Except was the church. There. So I, I actually. And applied for funds which are going to be removing primarily trees from the church which have fallen on my property or are in the process of falling on my property. Mm. So it's, 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 you know, many, much of the damage actually occurred at the, at the boundaries of property, sort of muddying the waters as to mm. whose tree is down and is it yeah. really down? If it's down, the, 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 where the property is down on owns it. It, it gets very murky after a while. And, um, well, we could ask Tom maybe to, if he could spend a few minutes investigating kind of how they dealt with a lot of tree damage down in the Springfield area when they had the tornadoes. Maybe they had some insight of some other areas that we don't know about. Well, and of course that was a disaster area. There was a FEMA, so, there was a FEMA disaster area, which yeah, we, so we didn't have happen here. But. They had a lot more resources. Mm -hmm. The, the other area that, you need, you, that someone needs to think about, and we tried to get money for it, but uh, there's, is that area behind the church, Pumpkin Hollow Brook, has got 100 trees down there. It'll make very dangerous. They're going to clog up the stream. Um, and there is a get the trees out of the waterways type program from the USDA, but they declined to initiate it because they thought that the this forest, you know, emergency forest recovery program, also USDA through the Farm Service, they thought that should deal with it. Mm. Uh, those, but those land, you know, those landowners have applied, but I don't know how much that will do for them, because it's just, it's not enough per acre. $1,600 an acre, that's like two acres, three acres of trees at most. When you approach the church for money, what do they say they don't have any? I have been reluctant to ask them. I, I work with uh, Bill uh, Len Leno, you know, you know, and uh, you know he's offered a personal contribution. Uh, as as the only, yeah. he, he says that the that the finances of the church are so up in the air right now that they they are they really can't make a decision right now. Well, and I, I appreciate I, you know I understand that. That's been our negotiation with the church also. So far as it, everything's up in the air still. So yeah. So uh, so anyways so we're still. You know, we're looking for creative ways to, to deal with well, that. Well, if so. we hear of any or can think of something, I mean, I don't, we can discuss it again some other than yeah. when John's here. Um, How about uh, could CPA funds? Would, it, would they clean them up at a historic no. area, a big community no. preservation act? Would it be eligible yeah, that's for like that? an operating expense type of item. The CPA funds are for major long-term capital preservation. I, I can assure you that that's not a legal use. As a long time chairman of the CPA committee, that's just not a legal use of the... Even for the church? No. It's, it's, no. 
the C it's the CPA that granted the hundred thousand to the church. I don't a, believe it was a capital church is in a historical right. district. It was a capital preservation. Right, so that's right. right. Cap I know, Town but Hill the church has already received mm -hmm. CPA funds. Yes. four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. For, think, for capital preservation. Yeah. 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 A few years ago, um, it's part of their property. They're, it's yeah. the same. Mm -hmm. Same piece of well, property. It's not their yeah, building. Their building, I assume, yeah. is covered by their insurance, but maybe not all of it. It's maybe that would be. So, so I, I, I said, so, you know, we, we don't need to pursue this issue any longer, um, uh, but we would like to think ahead about how um, you know Team Rubicon might you know might might be useful again. Um, I, I think that they they. I know the people who are here want to return. It just has to do with their higher ups and. and their higher Would they consider working on the trees that are down on the brook behind the church? That's they need su serious heavy equipment they to do, do that. They need logging equipment, and that's they're usually not they're not really specialized. Well, what about in. approaching Panther Mill? Excuse me. Panther Mill's got the heavy logging equipment. And and you're also talking about uh, conservation, conservation commission. That, uh, yeah, that's a special designated area by the USDA. I forget what it's called. It has a funny name. It's, it, it's a something heritage something site. Natural heritage, heritage, heritage yeah. site or something. Nat natural heritage. Yeah. And, so, and and so there there would be state permitting to do. Whenever anybody does anything with those trees, there will be special permitting involved. Mm -hmm. uh, the local conservation commission. They there there may be actions they can take on an emergency basis, um, but uh, and that's, something, that's something between the landowners and the, and the Conservation Commission. Got it. Okay. okay. Uh, well, one thing I'd ask, if you're going to send that thank you letter, BCC me, so I just have a copy. Of we have it right here. Oh, well, well, but yeah, you but need it in the email form. Well, it's going to, I would make it into a PDF and send it. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. sure. I'll make I'd a, like to get copied. Yeah. I'll make a motion to vote a slip and sign this uh, appreciation letter to Team Rupercarn. Uh, you read it, I read it. Pretty well yeah. spells out the thank you from the town of Conway mm -hmm. for their assistance. Great, that's good. And great. hopefully we're working with them in the future. So yeah. uh, I'll make a motion to sign it. So I would second it. All those in favor? Of course, aye. aye. Good. good. Okay, thank you. And really appreciate that. We're just going to leave this for John to put his signature on it too. Then we'll get it right. Yeah, too. No rush. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Okay, the next item is on the new business, and it's Open Space Committee awarded a contract for evasive species control to Lincoln Fish. So where's Janet? Uh, she's out there. Yes. Uh, yes. Somebody out there. Hey, Janet. Janet? Yeah. Excuse me. I think you're up. We're well, up thank next, you. kid. Thank you. Thank you, boy. Sure. The contract, a basic species contract with uh, Lincoln Fish. This is a popular room today. Yes. Well, I had a couple of technical questions for Tom. So I filled in, you know, the contract's basically at the, the back page of it. But if you want, I, I put in a few of the, I mean, Tom and I should have worked this out. But The dates, um, the prices. <coughs> the dates and the prices. Yeah, yeah this should all be filled out for yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, that is. And, and they there's are. There's a new page one. Oh, okay. I mean, let's, you know, what they have okay. is probably still the blanks, right? Yeah. yeah. On that one, yeah. So this is the substitute page one. It just has, um, the dates. Now, I put in, I put in, um, June 1st. He had originally, I mean, you understand what this is, what the project does, and Right? Do I, can you just step, step back us? a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I didn't bring the map, but just there's, quick, just there's like sounds. four, three or four acres of invasives around the mm -hmm. edges. 
of the, well, all of our, I mean, all Michelle had done this huge color with all the different kinds of invasives. Yeah. And there's, I'm waiting to hear what you call the park these days. There's so. lots of, it's the South River Meadow. The South River Meadow, okay. <laughs> um, well, there's been no official name. That no, yet, that's But we what, all understand know, where it is. <laughs> well, you know, so the Bob, roses just, didn't like, you I know, took, they I wanted their name out. page on here and said this. Good, good thanks. Okay, so. It's a three-year project, most mm -hmm. of the heaviest work done in the first year. And on the back, at the end of the contract, is yeah. the real proposal. Great. So this is this is the program that you came to talk to us. The, the bunch of people are going to come in three years. They're going to cut it. They're going to yes. paint on the yes. poison. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's got a list of what products he's going to use on which of the invasives, and. Um, they're all approved projects on the safe area, Massachusetts sensitive areas materials list. And Lincoln Fish is the name of the yes, company? Yes, that's who we selected. We had three bids. Yeah. Um, and he is um, sort of local, really well known. He's been, a, well, in that field. And this, he's been a forester for a long time. And I think that's how he got into, into this work. Um, he's kind of the dean of the force um, uh, and um, so the, the, the it's got the outlines of what he's doing each year they were originally going to his original proposal we solicited this back in the winter or before the winter was they would have it would have started in the winter doing some cutting just because it's easier to cut mm -hmm. Um, but then he revised, you know, because of timing or a town meeting. So, he did, so I think they want to start as soon as possible. But so that's why I put July for June first. Uh, I get a, a queer, which is, you know, he's not going to start then. I get a query into the concom because we'll have to get concom approval for the project. I mean, similar, some similar work was done prior to the. River restoration. Will it matter that they'll be down there when we might have the fireworks that down there, or parking, or? Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work with him on, on timing. Uh, you still I mean, have to go to ConCon, though. Yeah, I mean at this point you'll be, yeah right at this point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. We're good. That's right. It's not June I haven't heard that. Yet. Right. June first. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Right. The day right. Tomorrow. Right. But yeah. But I, the, you know, <laughs> the contract has to start in end. Sure. Right. Okay. Great. And he said he he was gonna it ends in the summer of 2019, but I know they can treat the knotweed through the end of September, you know, up to frost kind of. And so I, I gave it a little extra October 15th of, of that year. Um, and we did add um, a little bit of flexibility in times in terms of how, like how many additional meetings. I want to organize and invite like neighborhood people and some people who were concerned mm -hmm. um, before the work starts for an explanation and question and answer and assurances, you know, they don't spray on windy days. I, I don't need to tell you these people. They don't spray on windy days, you know, they they don't, um, anyway. So um, that's basically it. There were a couple of places, just a little a couple of spots of bittersweet that I thought while we're having this work done, it's on town property that the town we should just have him treat also. And one is right over there on the bridge, and it, it flows at the end of the last year. It, it, it runs over the railing, mm -hmm. the bittersweet. And what they would do is they just put that, they cut it at the root, and then they put That's a little. In this contract? The, they put a little. Well, he put it in here to add, I think he's got it on the back. Here, I know I saw it, read it, that we would add to treat the, um, oh yes, see, in June and July, chainsaw of this year, uh, includes small batch of bittersweet next to bridge on Route 116. And the danger there is that it's right above the river? No, the danger I mean, there is that it wasn't part of the original. I field, understand, so. but. I mean, there's no danger. I mean, the reason why you're like, that would be covered. You you wouldn't do it, or that Ron shouldn't do it, or that yeah. Well, well, we're not licensed. He's licensed. Okay, but you no, you cover this with the conservation people at the same time. Yes, well, he's he'll see this. Yes. yes, and we noticed last time at our meeting, there's some growing up through that hedge right in front of the town hall. It's a big, 
I trust you. I mean, you know what bittersweet is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's just, you know, we're, we're doing this and it's unsightly mm -hmm. sitting there, right? All over town. And well, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, this is, these it's are bad just, for the uh, I have bittersweet vines this big well, around. That's right. That but I, I mean, these the two are like screaming. Chainsaw, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Just for the camera viewing, can you explain where the money's coming from? This so, oh, yes. And, and it's in the contract, yeah. the back page of the contract where you're going to sign. I put down the speci specified for the accountant that it's coming from the CPA funds that were approved at this past town meeting for this particular project. See the little footnote that the, the accountant yeah. authorizes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, uh, so, so we just got to kind of verbal. Okay. I'll make a motion we sign this contract. I would second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I mean, no time like the present, but I think we should hold off till after the 250th. And it sounds like oh. that's going to happen by oh, default. Not gonna make it nice. Right. Yeah. I mean, he we're could, only going to be done it one could, night after dark. Theoretically, so. he could do some cutting. You know, there's some places, some things they're going to cut. It'll the, so the, that property over there. Work. The only effect that uh, we don't the town would to. have on that property but, down there okay. for him would be the night of the Friday, the 16th of Thank June. They're going to be setting up most of the day yeah. down oh, there. Oh, okay. So he can't they're going, be going to be putting up uh, yeah. barrier okay. fences for the fireworks and stuff okay. like that. So, so that really, other there. than that, all right. Other no, than that, no, that's no, it. No six okay. 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 good. Hey. And, and we will also have our town accountant <laughs> certify that we have <laughs> our money. That's part of the town contract. So that we have one day. We're so. And, and you'll keep David Fisher informed. I mean, yes, it, well, it, he's going to be invited. Yeah. I'm going to try to schedule um, this info there. session first with him. He, he's, we had, we had, you you know, know, he has a serious <laughs> interest, <laughs> important interest. Yes. Yeah, but now, yeah, I, be on my way. now yes. I'm another yes. year away. Gonna see what his availability is in terms of scheduling, and I'll invite you too. Great. <laughs> and everybody else. I hope Lori Sanders could take care of his uh, issues, but apparently uh, he needed more than that. Yeah, I don't know how much of them. Because they're human options. I think he's okay. He just wants to make sure. Yeah. No, I just figured out. We oh. know. He, everyone knows. He's talking about need to license. be careful. I don't know if I'm there. <laughs> well, they have right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks okay. for getting this done. Next, this through. Yeah. Next item is a uh, signed contract with Tyon Bond for phase one of the wastewater system design. Joe? That is me, I guess. That is. <laughs> you have a copy, right? We have the contract. You have the contract? Uh, I, uh, is this the one? don't know that we got one back from town council. Well, he said it was okay. I sent you his email. Oh, okay. He didn't change. That's good. So we don't have, if you don't have one, that's it. We don't have a contract. No. I want to prove it. I'm sorry? You want to prove it? Make sure it's the right one. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We did check with uh, town council. He had a few minor comments, but yeah, um, nothing else. Was his comments create changes or not? Yeah. Um, one of them was that there's sometimes there's a line for the accountant to say there's money, but it was approved at town meeting, so Tom didn't think that was a big issue. Mm -hmm. So we're only doing phase one, okay? And it only takes one signature, but if, <coughs> if we have it in the minutes that the board approved it, then anyone can sign okay. on behalf of the board. So this is just to explain do. to me just in the next 30 seconds what this one involves. Um, basically, I think we're going to dig about six holes on mm -hmm. the field. Some are deep holes. We're actually looking for water. We're hoping to find water. Mm -hmm. That's, we're desperately trying to do it during the wet season. It reduces the cost of the design and of the installation mm -hmm. of a leach field if you actually find water. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you have to use these very conservative calculations, which actually could cause us to have to put more fill in. So we're actually hoping to dig while it's still wet. Uh, I've been working with Heidi and uh, Gary Topman and Carl Nelke and uh, Ron Sweet. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get in before the fireworks. I don't think we're going to make it. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to go in there when before Gary mows it and he hasn't been able to mow it yet. Yeah, we're hoping <coughs> Gary can get it mowed before the fireworks too. That's what he said. Yeah. He's a little sun. And, uh, so hopefully it'll stay wet and we can do it right after the fireworks. Yeah. Not too wet. 
Absolutely. For the fireworks. <laughs> the fireworks the fire, the fire fire is tied up that <coughs> June 16th, all day, June 16th, and a portion of the 17th morning. Uh, I, the state law requires the fireworks and the fire department to go back in at first light, they call it. Next day. Early in the morning and search their whole area for unshot shells. Oh, well, that's a Saturday morning anyway, so hmm? yeah. that's a Saturday morning. Yeah. Well, your daughter bought herself another day and told me I had to be out by the 14th, by the 15th. 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 Uh -huh. I didn't know they were coming Thursday night. So. Well, I don't know. They, you know, they, they, yeah, they told us Friday, but you know, unfortunately, they, Carl Nelke's first available day is the 15th, uh -huh. and I told him we couldn't do it on the 15th. He's not available before that, so I don't know what we're going to do. Uh -huh. We probably will have What's to. What's the do deadline it. you got to get in by? What's the deadline first? The deadline to stop it. Or was it? I don't know if there's a hard date, and we need to do it when it's wet. Yeah. And it's well, been well. Wet. Wet, so. <laughs> it's a question of how yeah. right. quickly it dries out. So. so they're going to do the design. What else are they doing? Uh, the testing they're going to come back testing. with firmer pricing for us. We're okay. going back to town meeting. With. Mm. They doing any survey? or I shouldn't say an analysis of. Uh, well, they dig the hole. Estimated the, customers or anything like no, that. That's, no, that's we'll, we'll be that. working with them. We have a survey that we're working on. Okay. Um, Is that part of the plan too? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Any questions? Uh, I would wanted to go for the four hundred and thirty thousand, so, so it probably wouldn't have passed. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have. So, <laughs> so the, the, getting this much I was done is a to good get start. The board's unanimous support for this because it's going to be a tough sell. Well, I make a I make a recommendation that the board approve this and uh, sign the sign it for phase one only. For phase one only. I'll, I'll second it. Uh, I'll, I'll, you're second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll, I can sign this. I guess Tom Wigley. Sure. Sign on the top line. Phase one. Yeah, just as phase one. Where's your partner in crime today? Uh, I don't know. He's, he gets stuck in Boston a lot. Stuck in Boston. I-3017. Tom, you want to make so, the copies of that for us? Yeah. Sure. This will be one more good reason for having a special town meeting now. Very good job. If Thank you very much. If we don't dig, we won't be coming back. Yeah. Right. If we, no, no. If we have to wait. Um, what they're telling me is we might be able to dig in the fall if it's a wet fall. You know, if we miss yeah. now, and if not, we'll have to wait till next spring. So it could be a whole year. Well, you don't know. It's up to Mother Nature, right? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> we'll have some. Uh, Are you going to mail some that bright, out? Some bright sunny days. Yeah. After I make copies. Okay. So you want to just hop in tomorrow and get a copy? We'll have three bright sunny days for the festival. Everything else completely sunny. I need like five actually so they can Five, come. yeah. Don't go away, Heidi. <laughs> Heidi, don't go away. Oh, you can go? You're up next, kid. You're up next, apparently. Good luck. Okay, next on. item is the 250th anniversary celebration. I thought that was next week. All right. Well, today. That's, that's yeah. the next one. Also, okay, you're coming in again on the 12th. Great, you remember that's happening? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any meetings I have right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm do, sure. we need, do we need her here? Are we running this action? Well, we don't need her, well, but to, I can to, to be here to approve the approve liquor, the liquor, liquor license and to sign yes. the, the parade. I need and liquor have a parade permit. license, absolutely. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do this first. Let's do the uh, license for alcoholic beverages. I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen approve the uh, common vehicular license for wines and malt beverages to be drunk on the premises of the town of Conway for the 250th week. It doesn't say vehicular, it right. says victual. Victor, victual. victual. <laughs> <laughs> like victual. Not a word we I ever use. That's right. Well, vehicular is what you would want. But I make a motion. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll sign it. Those, it starts on the Friday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, Friday, right. June 16th at 5 p.m. Super. Heidi, we can give you a copy of that if you like. I don't need one of those. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, she'll give you copies. Yeah. Okay, and then the next thing is we have a um, this is certified that 250th celebration parade is hereby granted a parade permit from the town of Conway from the cover bridge to Pumpkin mm -hmm. Hollow on the Waitley Road. Well, it doesn't say Waitley Road, but it's on definitely on Waitley Road. On June 18th at uh, 2017. Copy sent to the fire chief and the police chief. I'll make a motion to the board of selectmen sign that permit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Copy that one, 
or is this good? This is just liquor? Yeah. Can I get a cup of that one too? Oh, just yeah, so yeah. Anybody ask me yeah, where yeah, I have can. it? <laughs> Okay, what can I see? Trying to read from it. I think you're golden, hey? Yeah, no questions. Uh, how's our antique car about? Oh, I was going to talk to you about that. I, my firefighters and auxiliary really, really want me to match with them in the parade. Yeah. So I have pretty much decided myself that I guess I probably should because it's probably going to be the last big parade I can be marching with them then. Eh? And get close to retirement age, and uh, so I had my. I approached the gentleman about the antique car. His answer to me was, "Well, he didn't feel comfortable driving the parade himself anymore because he's an elderly man." And uh, so, if I was going to be with a selectman in it, and I, I, he would give me permission to drive his car, which I didn't feel comfortable about. Yeah, because I don't own it. Uh, so I think that's totally up in the air now. So, so John and I could march with you? With the fire department? Back near the fire department? Uh, um, uh. We could try to arrange that. The committee thought you guys could be the pooper scoopers. <laughs> uh, that would be okay. Do <laughs> you have uniforms we could wear? <laughs> I've I, I scooped a lot of poop, but no. <laughs> no, but if you know any, we need some. <laughs> well, why don't you discuss that with yeah. John and okay. get back to Heidi? Whatever right. you guys, yeah, just let us know what you want to do. Uh, the fire department, I think, is going to be towards the front of the parade is the last thing I heard mm -hmm. tonight, apparently. Um, so that might work out if that's what you want to do. If you're going to march... Um, if you're gonna be in a car, I don't know how that'll work. So no. let me know what you guys feel. If you want to be in an automobile, we'll figure out where you're gonna be. If you're gonna be marching, we can figure out differently. We can definitely walk it. It's not. Okay. That's not a problem. Like, actually, a size you walk. know, uh, we we could possibly arrange something if you wanted to ride in a new fire truck. There you go. Now you're talking. Free selectman. Yeah. You have to march. Talk to the firemen about do would they they would feel good about that you being in the fire truck so instead of marching. I don't them? think it's a choice. They, 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 yeah, that's what I wonder. Huh? You have to march. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was the instructions I was given. That's you what have I'm to march. No, I know. That's what they were saying. So you anyway, okay. So, yeah, maybe we can march together right in front of the group or something. Yeah. Slackman and well, the we fire have the Slackman, and then you always lead off the fireman anyway, so you could be at the so be like uh, two one. I would just rather we were all doing it we rather could, than have just us lead separate. the fireman. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they could lead right in front of. Yeah. I'll be in uniform, I'm in. Yeah. I'll just mark with the Slackman, and the fireman is be right behind you. Right behind us. I can put that request in. Okay, how's that? I know the people. Great, no, great. Then they kind of get the definition that yeah, I'm in the two position. Yeah, thing, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and okay. that the full board is marching. The only thing I would recommend to the board, and uh, you go to march in this parade? Ah, uh, well, I hope so. I don't know. I Maybe you should march with us. Oh. Um, speaking of that, do you guys have a banner? No. The select board has never had a banner. Never. Okay. Yeah, maybe you could get a child. I'm gonna or get a select board banner mm -hmm. made up, and you can or, keep it. Or something like that. Okay. Okay. Let's not take a hope. No. Um, there are plenty around. It would behoove enough, I think, of us as selectmen that I understand that Mrs. Reed, the lady next door, that's going to be is the oldest citizen in the community. She's like is going to be sitting on a porch. She's not going to be involved in the parade. It would be very behooving of us to stop our front and just walk up and congratulate her mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a select board. We can make that be a real citizen of county. It's only take a second or two to stop the parade and do that. We are getting a banner put up on her house. So with I mean, her I just think you could fight your way through the crowd. I don't know. I just think that would be very good to We could uh, arrange Thomas, a, a parking attendant. I mean, she is the oldest citizen, so just recognition of that. You know? mm -hmm. It'll only take a second or two. I mean, yeah. you have to do it. Yeah, that'd be Maybe. nice. Yeah. I can mention that. Yeah. Many. The we need to fall in that? No. 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 Yeah. She's, you need to get her. That's what you need. <laughs> All right. Good. We'll Great. Um, my only question for you guys was, is there any other permits that I'm unaware of that I should be having? I know the food people have to have their individual ones, which mm -hmm. we're working on, but I don't have to have like a town-wide <laughs> celebration permit or something weird that the, I don't know about, right? The Board of Health has to permit them that more that before they, when they settle. We're aware of that. The food. And the fire department. Mm -hmm. We'll go through and inspect for extinguishers and stuff like that. The, on Friday morning. 
Friday morning or Saturday morning, whenever they set up? Friday morning. Okay. Are they all setting up on Friday? Yes. Okay. I'm not trying to move people in after the celebration has started. Okay. Good. So, so we'll get that done Friday. Okay. okay. I've already issued a permit for the cannon fire. Yep. That's already been approved. And the fireworks? I have not got the permit back from the state of Massachusetts for the fireworks. I do intend on calling this mm -hmm. week because I sent it out two weeks ago. Okay. And I don't know what the holdup is, but if it was a holdup, usually they call you right back. It was other items, but they have not done that, so I will I'll be getting to them this week. Okay. I'm not waiting the last minute to find out why. Well, it doesn't matter. The show goes on. But <laughs> we've done our part, and the state fire marshal's done his part. Just the, getting the permit out of them was the other thing. Back. So. Everything's been approved and turned in. Okay. So we'll get it done. All right. Well, if there's anything else you guys think of that Ooh. we need to be covering, you know where I am. Apparently right. around town a lot. So. <laughs> Great. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you published your schedule. So yes, that it, was, that's been published. Um, yeah. And we are sending, we just sent out a trifold mailer that you all should have received at your houses if you live in the Conway Mailing District. And then the visitor, we did a whole huge spread in the visitor this month. We paid to piggyback onto there, so that's coming out. That's and coming out tomorrow, yes. right? Yeah, it's yes. coming out tomorrow. And if, if you had some extra trifolds, we could keep them here. I could get some brought here. Oh, We've done a very, absolutely. especially that colored one is very pretty. Yep. That's very nice. And we're shooting to have the program ready for the place, hopefully. Let's see. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Coming along. Be here before you know it. Like Selectmen <laughs> do know about the plays the week before, right? Uh, I'm there Thursday night. Yeah, you're at Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. So Did you get, you'll see me again. get a chance to get signed up from Tom? Or don't I try to I have not signed up for them. They're almost all sold out. The are they really? Yes, almost. Um, almost. So yeah. Friday night is sold out. Um, mm -hmm. Saturday and the two shows on Saturday have only 20 seats left at each. But you're a town. Well, Member, so you yeah. can go Thursday to the restaurant. They're all the oh, town employees, okay. and, and mm -hmm. like if you were any of you, you anybody in the shop? Lynn and I signed up the other day. For right? which which time? For you Saturday. Oh, okay. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. But you could yeah. go to the Thursday one, which is three quarters full too. So just mm -hmm. call. Okay. You get the number for him to call. Is the grill going to be going on Thursday? Can we bring food to yeah. cook? There's food. No, they're going to have food. Will be provided. Cook, but on Thursday. Yes, food will be provided. Great. I knew Friday and Saturday, but I was wondering about Thursday. Yep. BYOB. BYOB. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks. Should be a fun time. Good to see you. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Next item on the agenda is sign the Green Communities Contract Extension. Is that what this is here, Tom? That is what that is. Um, they really only have another couple of weeks to go, but the contract runs out tomorrow. The new contract ends tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So yeah, that that that's it, we're, this is extending the one which ends tomorrow for a year till 2018. Okay. So this is to complete the work on the the uh, town hall and and whatever else they have. Okay. To, uh, they've been doing some designs for maybe some insulation in the town garage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's really just to. to okay, I'll make, make sure. a motion to the board of selectmen approve the extension of the contract for the green communities. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll get Tom to have John sign it. See, he's the chairman, uh, and his name is oh, printed okay. here as oh. the That's contract. True. Uh, that yeah. is true. John sign it. We'll have to get that off. Okay. Okay, what do we got left next here? Insurance approval, fiscal year 18, injured on duty quotes. That's what these are here. Okay. Yep. And Ken and I have, Tom's given this both to Ken and I to look at, and uh, covers pretty much everything, doesn't it, Tom? Yep. Junior officers, everything. Yes. Your, yes, it does. That's what did you find on the juniors, Tom, for um, firefighters? That, that's apparently a standard part. They just build, they build that in. As long as they're not involved right. in the action, they're not. They're not. Um, everything's fine. Okay. Great. Anyone else can sign us, I guess? Yeah. Okay. I'll make so a long as there is a vote, yes. I'll make a motion. We approve the uh, uh, insurance uh, fiscal year 18 injured on duty quote. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve. Great. Title, select board member, right? Just mm -hmm. put select board member yeah. for title? Yeah. Five, 
30, 17. And then there's a second page. Uh, the, one of them is for full-time officers, of which we have one. The other is for part-time officers. Next item is to appoint appointments. <coughs> review the draft letter of appointments with language regarding cost of COA training. Uh, what is that? Conflict of interest. Uh, conflict yeah. of interest training. Yeah. training, swearing in, and timings. Uh, yes. That's what this is here. No. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a blank template. Guess I don't have it. Uh, it sh should be in your folder. Oh, it's by my folder. Yeah. 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 Um. And this is our reworking. Uh, we try to make this uh, short and sweet. It's gotten a little bit longer. Um, but uh, in talking with Ginny, um, you know, we always have a problem when we're putting the town report together and we, we have to say who's on what committee. And if someone hasn't been sworn in, they really aren't legally part of the committee. So we've been working with Ginny, whose job it is to swear them in, to try to get people to appreciate the need to come in and get sworn in. So one of the things that we've added that we wanted uh, your, your okay um, mm -hmm. is uh, in the second paragraph, the, uh, it starts off, please remember that all members of boards, committees, and commissions need to be sworn in by the town clerk in order for their votes on the business of the board committee or commission to be legal. Uh, contact the town, this is the new part, contact the town clerk within 15 days of your appointment by the select board to make arrangements to take the oath of office. We'll need a period after that. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're doing is we're not saying if you don't contact them within 15 days you're no longer appointed. We're just making that a recommendation. We're letting them think that that's what we're saying, mm -hmm. um, because we really need people to to do that in a timely way. Um, and also, uh, a little bit lower down, please note your failure to fulfill these requirements may indicate to the select board that you do not intend to accept your appointment. They may choose to appoint someone else. To that position instead. That allows us the opportunity if somebody continually is reminded to get sworn in, really if they agree. don't, we need people on these committees who have legal status in order for the work of the committee not to be challenged by somebody who might not like some decision that they made. So um, again, it's hinting to them that if you don't do this stuff, we may appoint somebody else. Now, we know that it's difficult to get volunteers. We don't want to scare anybody off, but we do want them to take their responsibilities seriously. So this is the letter that we're proposing to send out. Okay. Um, and we thought we'd let you know and, and ask for more or less your blessing on it, um, just, just so that you know that we're, we're trying to, to gear up a little bit on our end. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, and, and the same is true for the conflict of interest. I mean, and th this oh, is yes. sort of hinting yeah. that if they don't mm -hmm. do these two things, their votes are not legal. Yeah. So that, I mean, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. So it's important. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve Tom's letter to the uh, appoint uh, the people appointed to the town boards. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, you very us. much. Okay. Uh, and and we will uh, for the next two meetings. We'll be doing all of the appointments okay. for the town. Usually, the first one we do, everyone except the um, uh, staff and public safety officers, and then the second one. So it's all committees, okay. commissions, and boards. How often do we one. have to do the conflict of interest? Every year? Every other year. Okay. Not every town employee has to do them, correct? Um, because my fireman right. has never done it. 
-hmm. because they right. don't do any of the purchasing or anything like that for the fire department. So. Yes, it's if you have um, purchasing powers, some, oh, some, or, or policy making. Or policy. So it can be a policy making board, or so, so for instance, someone on the open space committee working with, they're they're spending money. Mm -hmm. Anyone on that committee does, that. and so really we try to get all of the committee's commissions and boards do it because they might bring a policy to the town that has some financial implication. They could ask for money. They could, you know. Okay. So just to be safe. Great. Uh, next item. Item is not anticipated 40 hour, eight hours in advance of any meeting. Do we have any of them that anybody knows of? Is this and one? I did have something. This one? And that's what it was. The yes. Okay. Um, uh, I'm working uh, very on a very tight timeline for mm -hmm. a, a grant for uh, um, a grant proposal uh, to get uh, some money to help us do our self evaluation and a transition plan for compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. We have to move forward on that for our CDB grant, CDBG grant anyway, the block grant money. Uh, part of that is appointing me as the ADA I coordinator. Did copy yeah. it's, it's just a, appointing me as the ADA coordinator, yeah. right. which is a, yeah. it's, I've been taking it for granted that I had that anyway, but I don't think I was ever formally appointed to that. It's not formally in my job description or the, or the contract, so I thought um, the state will need a copy of this mm -hmm. form. Great. I'll make a motion we sign the approval form for Tom to be the ADA coordinator of the Town of Conway. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. You're doing it. <laughs> Okay. And this needs to get, I assume, signed by to John or maybe not. Uh, not necessary, but a good good thing. Yeah. Any other items uh, not anticipated for the meeting? Uh, no. Okay. Town administrator update. I do have an update, and I will get you an electronic copy of that. Uh, for committee work, I've been working on the historic preservation restriction for the schoolhouse using the model proposed by the Massachusetts Historical Commission, the same template that was used for the church. We should be ready to move forward with that soon. It's being reviewed by the Conway Historical Commission. Uh, I have checked in with town council about problems with the town ball field and have some preliminary data I'd like to share soon in executive session as it would involve the possibility of legal action. Mm -hmm. Tom, before oh. you go any further, this first one on the uh, historic version. Yeah. Is that something that we'll have to have our town uh, lawyers look at too? Uh, sure. Town yeah. Council look at it. Um. Yeah, it's. I guess it, it's it. actually more the the Mass Historical Commission and the the local historical commission. But I just feel comfortable to look a, at it too, just to make. Oh yeah. Get his yeah yeah. Um. Uh, another Parks and Rec item, in case anyone you know has asked about the tennis net, it needs to be repaired and will not be up before the 250th anniversary celebration when it would be taken down anyway. Uh, you would not, well you probably would believe, um, there's been, I've spent an inordinate amount of time trying to get that tennis net up and it's, it, it's still not up. Uh, but we're much closer <laughs> to getting so the tennis net up. Somehow, uh, yeah, and and uh, that was purchased from some tennis company out of New Hampshire, Vermont. Tennis company business. Originally, I, I don't believe I was here when it was purchased. I but, can't give uh, your name. It's out, of, it's out of state. I know that. I need Vermont and New Hampshire there from. That would be helpful. I don't know where you're going to find that information, though. Well, if. If you, have, an out of state company, if you have any clues we, that would help? Uh, we had to have that repaired before. A few oh, years ago. okay. Mm. Uh -huh. um, well, maybe it's in our records. Who we could talk to about that. Let me think about that. See when we maybe we'll get some information uh, from them. It could be in our accounting records now. It could be, yeah. If, if it happened relatively recently. Um, in departmental news, 
the constables are considering or requesting the select board to sign a letter opposing legislation that would con curtail their responsibilities. They are reviewing the legislation now and may be drafting a letter for your consideration. This is state legislation? Yes. I think similar to the county legislation that came up earlier, some folks in the Boston area might find the Office of Constable uh, to be not as useful as it uh, is, I think, in some towns, is and remains um, in some of the western towns out here. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, I've been working on the mass uh, um, mass office of disabilities planning grant for American for the Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, and have Tom McCarthy and uh, Rusty Blossom Good. Good. on board. It's unclear how likely it is we'll get it, but if we do, it will help with our CDBG grant and our memorandum of understanding with the Mass Office on Disabilities as well. I, I, I see an alphabet soup in my future on this one. Yeah, that's a <laughs> you What's that's CDBG? Me. Community Development Block, Block Grant. Grant. Yeah. Great, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any concerns this second? Not um, me. Me either. And do we have any mail? Or do, do we know? Sorry. Maybe not. May not be any. Uh, as our as our first every oh. other week meeting is meetings are definitely oh. bigger. Yeah. There is. I continue to put things in the one in the back. You can check if you like. Um, I just put that in there. Okay. Uh, just in case, if either of you wanted to. Uh, knew that you were going to go. This is the. Uh, I could put it in for. Uh, Probably Schleckman's meeting, right? Yeah, yeah. and I, I could put it in, in for the warrant if I you am. knew you were going to go. I am going to be. again. I am going to be uh, tied up that night. I have two grandchildren graduating. Their graduation is the same night, so. Well, Congratulations. I, I think so, I have a conflict too. I mean, I believe I wrote to them already. Okay. I'll check again. So you may so, want to check this for John. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I did it was in case I needed to do something with it. Right. Right. Something came right down Whaley would be perfect, perfect, right, right close to home, but right. what are you going to do? You can't be in all places at once. All right, any announcements? Hearing no mm -hmm. announcements, uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 12th at the Town Office at 32 Main Street. Uh, I will not be at that meeting. I'll be away on my 45th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Where are you going? Another congratulations. We're, uh, we're going out of state. Uh, down to Good. Rhode Island. So I'm on the beach. It's down there. So. Uh, knowing any other unforeseen business, I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen uh, uh, meeting be closed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.